What's up everybody? I am not sure what's true or false in this video. This is a gossip video just like on a gossip blog website. So I take rumor and tea and gossip from online, from magazines, from books, from wherever I can find it and I ball it up and I tell you guys a story. Now let's get to the video. Hi everybody this is Ashley with Ashley Says So and I am back with another old Hollywood scandals video and today I am repping the incomparable honey, the incredible baby, the un- Inimitable or whatever, well you can't imitate her, I guess. Grace Jones, honey, let's get to it. Grace Beverly Jones was born in either 1948 or 1952, Spanish Town, Jamaica. Her mother's name was Marjorie and her father's name was Robert and along with Grace, they actually had six more children. Now to be clear, Grace was not called Grace at this time when she was a young girl or a baby. She was actually referred to by her middle name, Beverly. But just to keep confusion down, since we know her as Grace Jones, I will continue to call her Grace. And while Grace was still young, her father and mother actually left to go to the US seeking a better life. They left their children behind with the maternal grandmother. And per the word on the street, this was a very, very difficult time for Grace. And not only Grace, it was difficult for her siblings because her grandmother had married a man called Master P. And no, this Master P was not making them say, uh, but he was making them say, ah, because they said that uh, Master P was sitting up there beating them kids all upside the head. He basically ruled his household with an iron, Fits. But baby, let me tell you something. Even though she was living in this very tight knit strict household, you know, she kind of sometimes still slipped and did what she wanted to do. So there is a rumor out here that Grace saw a little boy that she thought was cute and he was her age as well. And Grace invited this little boy to come and get into a barrel with her. And you know, Grace was having the time of her life, but cha, that top lifted up off of that barrel, cha, Grace could have died. Because yes, it was an adult and yes, her behind was caught. Baby, them folks say Grace Jones was delivered a beating that she would never forget, honey. Now, by the time she had turned around 12, 13 years old, her parents brought her over to the Americas and Grace was very, very happy to get away from Jamaica. She was really just happy to get away from Master P. Grace started to paint her face with makeup, you know. She started to dress a certain type of way. She started to hit up these gay clubs all the time. Oh, and another thing she was doing was drinking alcohol a lot of alcohol. It was really because Grace Jones was a teen during the hippie movement, you know what I mean? She was around when all of this free love and everybody was getting high, she was around all of that and she embraced it with no problem. Her love was free, like free free, you know what I'm saying? She also became a go-go dancer and she went to New York. She signed with the Black Beauty Talent Agency and this was the same talent agent that Richard Roundtree had signed with. But for some reason with Black Beauty, whatever lighting or setup they had, it is said that it would make uh, Grace look very ashy and kind of pale whenever she would take her pictures. And so Grace left there and she ended up going to Wilhelmina Models. Even when she signed with Wilhelmina Models though, her fame still just did not pop off like that. But she is not giving up. In fact, she is adding something else to her repertoire. Not only is she trying to model, but she also wants to act in movies. And one of these roles was called the Acid Queen. And of course, the role goes to Tina Turner. Now it's time to sprinkle a little bit more tea in it because yes, honey, the tea on the street says Grace Jones was trying to get with Miss Tina Turner. Grace was not only trying to get with Tina Turner, Grace was pretty much getting with almost everybody. There was this one story that says that she started sleeping with her hairstylist and this guy's name was Andre. Per Grace Jones, Andre was the first man to make her orgasm. After she experienced that orgasm, oh baby, that was over with, it was done. You know, she was basically holding on to his leg. I'm like, baby, you ain't going no doggone well. Ain't no man ever made me feel like that. So she was really, really attached to this guy. So one night, while she is still dating Andre, Grace goes out to this club and you know, she's in there jamming, having a good time. And she notices this lady walking and this lady is dressed to the nines and she's holding a big butcher knife. And so Grace kind of looks at the woman, but she's like, you know, hey, hey, everybody crazy in here. That girl got a knife. What's going on? Somebody runs up to her and gets in her ear and they's like, uh, Grace, did you see that girl walk in with a knife? That girl is here for you. That is Andre's girlfriend. You better get your little Scooby-Doo head up out of here. And so that's what Grace does. Well, come to find out that girl's name was Kara and she was indeed Andre's longtime girlfriend. But even after this episode, Grace just could not let Andre go so she kept on seeing him but then that Kara girl his actual real girlfriend started to go through a severe depression and she also started 
to starve herself. She would not eat anymore. She got bone thin. And it is said that this is when Grace was like, okay, this is enough. Like, I'm not going to be responsible for this girl's death or her depression. So it said that's when she left Andre alone. And per the word on the streets, Grace Jones was not a stranger when it came to messing with other people's men because there's this real, real nasty rumor out there about Grace Jones. Let me tell you about it. So when Grace first signs to Wilhelmina and tries to model professionally, she has a friend that is also signed and this friend's name is Pola. But Pola is suffering with depression from things that happened to her in her childhood. So Grace tries to help her, you know, and Grace ends up introducing Pola to a friend of hers, a male friend of hers. Pola and this male friend, they get together, they're in a relationship. While she is still dating this guy, Pola ends up losing her battle to depression and she ends up committing suicide. The rumors start to fly. It was a lot of words on the street that said the reason that that girl killed herself is because she found out that Grace Jones was messing with her boyfriend. But per Grace Jones, this is not true. She said that once she hooked that guy up with Paula, she never messed with him, never did anything with him. And so Grace just got overwhelmed. She couldn't deal with it. Plus, like I said, she was not getting any jobs over here in America. And so she ended up just running away from it all. So Wilhelmina told her the best thing that she could do was go to France. It was here in Paris that Grace Jones really became Grace Jones. The French people loved her. They took a big liking to her. You know, whereas America didn't know what to do with her, the French people embraced her very high statuesque cheekbones, you know. They embraced her androgynous look. And so when it comes down to her career, you guys pretty much know what happens after this. Grace Jones skyrockets. So now, honey, y'all know what time it is, baby. Time to get to the salacious gossip, rumors, and tea. Let's get to it. This first rumor starts when she lived with Jerry Hall and Jessica Lane. Well, of course, all three of these young ladies are very young, they are very beautiful, and they are models, so they hit the nightlife in France hard. And one of the most salacious things is that they used to share men. And no, ma'am, I am not talking about, hey, you date him this month and I'll date him next month. No, honey, I'm talking about share them, like, on the same night. I can actually believe that rumor because there is another guy out there. His name is Tony. And this Tony guy has said time and time again that he was a road manager for Grace Jones. He's just doing his work. And then supposedly one day out of the blue, Grace comes up to him and is like, come on. And he's like, what's going on? And she like, come on right now get down it's time to do this like every time right before grace would have a show she would need to get her fix on you know and tony would have to be the one to give her that fit now out of all of the men that grace did date there were three that really stood out jean paul good Dolph Lundgren, and the third one's name was Attila Altonbe. Now, the first guy, Jean-Paul Gould, when he and Grace first met each other, he was actually shooting photographs of her, and then he started to flirt with her, and then they ended up getting together. They stayed together for a very long time, and she actually got pregnant by him, and she ended up having a son named Paulo. Jean-Paul Gould loved Grace Jones's furry tennis ball head, baby. He loved that woman and would do anything for her, but Grace Jones would was Grace Jones. So Grace's son Polo is around two years old at this time and Grace has a movie to shoot. And I actually think this movie shoot was in Australia. And so while she is there, she meets Hans Lundgren. And immediately Grace is smitten by Hans. You know, he is just a really beautiful man to her. And so she's shooting this movie and she's there for a few days and Grace sees all of this man meat running around particularly Hans or Dolph. So Grace gets hot in the tail. And you know, she's holding it, bobbing around everywhere, you know, trying to keep everything good because of course she has Jean Paul at home. And then finally she cannot hold it anymore. So word on the streets is that she called Jean Paul and told him, you know, get here now. And so Jean Paul is like, I can't, Grace, I have to work. And so Grace is like, you know, I am not a cheater, but I will have to cheat on you because my hormones are popping. I can't take this anymore. You know, and so John Paul is like, Grace, please don't do that. But I cannot leave. I have work to do. So Grace hangs up the phone and immediately goes and jumps Dolph Lundgren's bones, honey. Shaking the bed, rocking everywhere, sweaty, just having some passionate stuff. Because she says that she could not hold it. After this episode is over, Grace does get back to John Paul and she actually tells him 
what she has done and so grace is like you know but i love you i will still work this out with you everything is fine and jean paul is like no it's not you bald headed heifer everything is not fine you've cheated on me and i don't want you no more and so just like that their relationship was over and grace was possibly saddened to see this relationship go because it is said that she loved jean paul but honey she had this fine piece of man meat on her hand Dolph, and so you know they just got together and as soon as they made it official honey they were hot stuff i mean they were sizzling just everybody wanted a piece of grace jones and Dolph lundgren everywhere they walked everywhere they went you know people would turn and glare you know what i'm saying they were just really boss you know and they really were almost like twins you know they were one and the same their face shapes were alike their haircuts were alike their builds were kind of alike and so immediately you have this chocolate wonder woman this goddess and then you have her male counterpart you know and so everybody wants to photograph them and when you look at the pictures the work is magnificent i mean they really look like ebony and ivory statues and so people are just eating it up and really wanting to eat them up well, baby, word on the streets is that people did eat them. Dolph and Grace had a bunch of orgies at their home while they were dating. There's also a rumor out here that says Grace Jones would bring other women into her bedroom and let that woman get on with Dolph. And, you know, she would just sit there and watch and enjoy the show. But the thing is, though, as this couple walks in with their heads froze up to the sky and all that kind of mess, these long chins and stuff, what starts to happen is that Dolph Lundgren, well, Hans at this time, who actually changed his name to Dolph, around this time starts to become more popular and so Dolph feels like you know hey I can have a movie career now and he starts to try to want to do his own thing he wants to get his name out there and uh Grace was said to have resented that his first story talks about how Dolph was working on his movie career and he was actually like staying in an apartment with somebody dealing with a movie that he was working on or something like that and so Grace came by to get him and Dolph would not come home with her he would not come outside she pulled out a gun and was like knocking on the door with the gun and it was like you know i'll kill all of y'all i promise i will shoot y'all if y'all do not open this door and if dolph does not come home with me right now and then you have another rumor regarding her and Dolph Lundgren and this is when they had gotten into a huge fight and Dolph had left their house well while he was gone Grace was just angry and just going crazy and it was getting worse and worse and worse and so she started to cut up his clothes Grace Jones it is said had a very big problem with her anger and also with holding on to stuff this next story is about Grace Jones and taxis while she was over in Paris she would have a hard time hailing taxis but soon the taxis went from not stopping for Grace to seeing Grace on the side of the street and actually going down another road to avoid Grace Jones because Grace Jones had started to store eggs in her purse and she started throwing eggs at the taxis because she was just so upset about how all of the times in the past they would leave her on the side of the street. And then Grace Jones ended up hanging out very tightly with Andy Warhol and of course this set up for some really really crazy times especially when they would go to studio 57 together oh honey when they hit that club anything went it did not matter that is where grace spent her most wildest moments like that is where she really started acting crazy she would get out there and she would just start stripping golf she's shaking everywhere and feeling the music and sweaty and doing all those spins looking like terry cruz on white chicks and of course hooking up and making out with whoever she wanted to and to talk about grace's drug use yes she did once again use cocaine she used lsd she used acid she smoked weed she uh tried heroin grace has tried almost every drug under the sun and of course grace jones is not normal in any way she will never be normal she would never be basic so the way she did her drugs was not normal and not basic especially her cocaine she says she would get a rock and would that mean crack but anyways the way they described it was a rock of cocaine so she would get her little rock of cocaine and grace would actually stick hers up her behind because she said that it made her lower half feel very um sexually stimulated and so if anybody tried to make her sniff it or shoot it or whatever no grace wanted hers up her bum, and you needed to put it up there for her now when grace took these drugs you know she really became very free and very uninhibited and she used to do just like crazy stuff like there's this one rumor about how she was going to a modeling audition and they gave her an outfit to wear and grace did not like it and, she, and so grace is waiting out in the hallway 
uh, waiting to be called. She has this outfit on and she's hot. She starts to rip everything off of herself and take it off. And then when they call her in there, she goes in, she strikes her pose, gives those smoldering eyes and does her turnaround and she's completely naked. This actually got Grace Jones hired. And then it said that you would have to be very careful if you wanted to invite Grace Jones to events. Somebody invited her to something and there was a whole bunch of French politicians there. So everybody's just like wondering what type of wonderful fashion she's going to wear. And so Grace walks in and honey, she is wearing a string necklace of bones. And that's it. She walked into that dinner room with nothing on but naked, honey. Pranced in there and then turned her booty cheek by somebody that was sitting beside her. And then she sat down at the table butt naked and was just ready to eat. And so the world knew that Grace Jones was wild and raunchy and crazy and kind of had her own personality. But they didn't really know about this anger. That is until Grace Jones went on national TV, honey, and definitely definitely showed her anger. Let me tell you about it. So Grace was invited to do an interview on the Russell Hardy show. And so she goes to the show. They go through the rehearsal. You know, everybody answers the questions and asks the questions. Like everything is fine. The rehearsal goes absolutely splendid. Well, when they get there, everybody is seated around and they go through the show just like they had rehearsed it the night before. But this time something is different. Russell Hardy says his lines or whatever he needed to say to Grace Jones and then he turns around and starts talking to somebody over here. Well, as soon as he turns around, baby, that man started getting bust all upside his head, honey. I'm talking about... I mean, head and face just going everywhere. And Grace know better than that. She ought to be shaming herself because that man did not even know what was happening. Now, Grace says the reasons that she acted like this is because she had some bad cocaine. Somebody gave her some bad drugs before she went on the show. And she said that, you know, she wasn't even hitting Russell Hardy. She actually thought some pigeons were flying and dripping bird boo-boo on her shoulders. And so she was really slapping away at the pigeons. That was one story, though, because the next story says that she just did not like the way that Russell Hardy turned his back on her. She thought that was disrespectful, and so she wanted to slap the disrespect out of him. America was floored. They could not believe this woman was just slapping on this man like that, and Russell sure enough couldn't believe it. And then you have this next story that talks about Grace and her performance at Disney World. And so in either 96, 97, 98, Disney World has a concert, or Grace Jones has a concert at Disney World, okay? Grace gets on the stage, and she is Grace Jones. Immediately goes crazy and vogue and does all this kind of stuff, lifts up her shirt, wiggles her breast, and flash everybody just like Grace Jones would do. So immediately the people at Disney World are like, you know, get up, ball head and tail off the stage, go, go, go. And Grace ends up getting banned for life from Disney World. Like supposedly she cannot go back right now. And there's also this one story where drugs possibly put her in a dangerous situation. So per the gossip on the street, Grace was on a plane, okay? And she had taken too much of some drug. I think it might've even been like a sleeping medication. I'm not sure. But whatever the case, she had taken too much of it, so she was like high, like zoned out, like blah. But she said that she could sense that she was only around men. And they started kind of walking around her. You know, she was laid out on the floor and just kind of looking at her. And so she ended up getting a sense that these men were about to rape her. So suddenly, Grace goes, <laughs> And so the men are like, ah, you know, scared or whatever. And so Grace said what she was doing was trying to act like she had something, like rabies or something was wrong with her because she wanted the men to be scared that if they raped her, they would catch whatever she had. And apparently this worked because those men were like, ooh, cha. To get back to Grace's career, we all know that her modeling career took off. But Grace did not really become worldwide known for real until she started to star in movies as well. She starred in Conan the Destroyer. She starred in Boomerang. She starred in A View to Kill. But even that did not go without scandal or rumor because it is claimed that some of her co-stars did not like her. In fact, it is said that Arnold Schwarzenegger definitely did not like working with her on Conan the Destroyer because he felt like she was too tough. Now on top of Grace's movie career, I don't know if a lot of you guys know it, but she also had a singing career. As a matter of fact, in the 1970s, she had a pretty good disco hit. And that song was called I Need a Man. And it is said that that song turned into a gay man anthem. And she also did like La Vie and Rose and My Jamaican Guy and stuff like that. So like I said, she had a music career as well. These are all of the rumors that I could 
find on Grace Jones and things that she has done in the past. But as we all know, Grace Jones is still alive and kicking. And she is very, very much still Grace Jones because, honey, it's one point in time where I thought Mary Wilson was going to jump on stage and bust Grace Jones all up side of her head, honey, because Grace Jones tried it, baby. So it was some award show, and Tom Jones was up to get an award. And if y'all watch my Mary Wilson video, y'all would know that Tom Jones was her boo. So like I said, Tom Jones is getting this award, and Grace Jones is there to present him the award. Baby, don't y'all know that Grace handed him that award and then gave him a second award on top of that? Honey, y'all know it was some fresh panties, honey. Mm, 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 mm. Grace Jones gave that man a pair of her panties. So, like I said, Grace Jones is very much still Grace Jones. She is still very incredible. She cannot be imitated, honey. There is the one and only Grace Jones, and we love her here. And we just want to sit back and see what other type of scandals and tea she got up her sleeve. As this is the end of the Grace Jones Old Hollywood Scandals video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I am working on another video soon. Bye.